Who he just kept repeating, Seven. nothing happened to you. Nothing happened. You'll never tell anybody nothing happened. Then we got out in the middle of nowhere. I'm still shook up about this. I'm, af- I'm afraid as I talk about it. He got out of the car, yeah. and he looked at me, and I'll never forget. It's like his eyes weren't there, and he said, leave now because I don't want to hurt you. I drove away. I started to cry after I got away from him, and I got it back into town, and I drove around town until I found a police officer. Um, when, when the police officer got to me, I was broke up and told him, and the police were already looking for me because the clerk at the liquor store had seen the man get in my car and heard him scream. They were looking for me my, in my car and a man in a black suit that had gotten in my car. Holy smokes. Did they ever find? No, 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 no. And it's a very small town that I live in. That's why I don't want to say where I'm at. I hear you. They never found him. Never. And he's never been seen again. But I've had instances, I won't even drive at night anymore, where a black automobile has came up behind me and been flashing its lights, wanting me to pull over, it seems like, and I just get home as fast as I can. I, I won't even drive anymore. Um, I've sent... This has happened, been diagnosed with agoraphobia where I will not leave my house. I will not leave my house unless someone's with me. Um, I can't say that I blame you. Jim, have you ever heard a story like that? It, uh, it sounds pretty classic. In fact, I, I've heard stories just like that. Um, it related See, I to thought the, I was going crazy. Yeah, I, I, I've heard stories just like that, actually. All right, well, caller, I don't know what to tell you. Um, but I might react as you have. I might not be going out a lot at night. Do you think that he did this to me because of the episode of Missing Time? Oh, now there's an intriguing question. Uh, Jim, uh... Well, you know, Missing Time um, can go can go both ways. It, it, it can be an anomalous event, a kind of a paranormal um, a twisting, a twisting of time. But at the same time... Um, you know, there are such things as government mind control programs, and there are, uh, I believe it's Halpadol, um, is, is the drug that uh, specifically in overdose gives incidents of missing time. So lacking any further data, it, it, it's really hard, it's really hard, hard to say if we're looking at paranormality or, or just, uh, uh, massive arrogance, um, of, of an agent. Oh, or could it, but could it relate to the missing time incident? Sure. Sure, sure it could. Uh, east of the Rockies, you're on the air with Jim Keith. Hello. Uh, this is Bob from Baytown. Hello, Bob. Um, this is, this happened to me about, oh, well, I'm not real sure. It's about, it could be either three or four years ago now. Yes. Um, but y'all were talking about, you had never seen their eyes. Well, me and a couple of my friends did see their eyes. And they're, the, the, this is what's so funny about it is, or weird, is, um, uh, before we saw these guys in men in black, or, or as y'all call them, uh, we all saw something that was really strange going, we were going out, and we were going down the, this uh, road in, in here by us, and we thought, you know, we saw a police helicopter, you know, flashing its light on the ground, you know, yes. looking for uh, maybe a, a, someone who broke into a house or a drug deal, something sure, other sure. people facing. Sure. Well, it, uh, we were, we were stopped on the, at a, stop, stopped at a stoplight, and there was a bunch of us, they were in different automobiles, but we all, the light was real long, so we were all going, look, they're going, you know, top got someone, you know, because the light had stopped at some point, and we kept watching this going through all these lights, because it was way down the road from us, and, you know, we were going, oh, crud, they're going to stop us or keep us from going to where we were trying to get to. Anyway, um, there was, uh, the light stopped, and it was pointing down at the ground. Well, we, we, we all said, well, they got him, you know, and then the light turned off, and the next thing we know, we're all, we're still, we're at another stop watching this, the, the police helicopter, which we thought it was, and most of us still sort of think it might have been, but it couldn't have, couldn't have been because when it decided to leave, it just, I mean, oof, it was gone. I mean, it zipped. I mean, it was gone and nothing flat. I mean, you couldn't even track it. It's okay, but you said you saw eyes. Yeah, this is where we're getting to. Well, we, we got to the place where we were going. And um, there was a club we were going to, and we were all inside. We hadn't been there maybe 20 minutes when um, a friend of mine uh, tapped me on the shoulder going, look, you know, because we were all standing there watching to uh, see if anybody came in or a friend. There came in four guys dressed in black suits. Yes. And this doesn't make any sense because this is, this is a, um, here, in, here in Texas at a, a uh, it was at a bar, and there are four guys in black suits. And we hadn't been drinking at all. Um, of us yet, but it just, it was so weird because 
they came in, they were dressed in black suits, and they were they had sunglasses on. Well, you don't walk into a club with sunglasses on at night. Cause, right. You know, they they don't want you to, you know, hurt, fall over or something or whatever. Right. Well, the uh, bouncer told them to take their sunglasses off. Well, these guys did. And that when we when we finally noticed that they were sort of dogging us all, I mean, all of us, when any time we walked around the bar, they were, you know, maybe 10 feet away or 5 feet away every time we, we moved around the bar. Uh, and yeah, their eyes, what about their eyes? Their, you know, the, the that weird uh, gray-looking color, it has black, or, you know, on the outer right part, and then there's a real light, light gray or blue gray. Yeah. These are four guys. They all not the same type or the same uh, look but, the same. But all with the same eyes. All with the same eyes. All right. Uh, Jim, is that consistent with stories you've heard? These guys are really charming, you have to admit, uh, Art. But, uh, yeah, uh, you know, the details on the men in black vary, and they vary in, in very strange ways. I, the, sometimes uh, the men in black almost... Uh, switch in, into comedy. Sometimes it's horror, but again, you get these consistent details, and the weird eyes is is one of those uh, one of those details. Oftentimes, they have Oriental eyes. I know of cases or a, a, a case where the person described uh, talking to this man with kind of bug eyes, and as he talked, his eyes seemed to ex- extend two inches out of the socket. Oh. Um, well. Yeah, there are. Uh, yeah, the uh, the weird eyes is is a uh, a continuing detail. I would not like that. Um, why do you think, Jim, that a subject that you have written seriously about, and that I am now amazed with? You know, I said people who have actually seen a man in black call, and were flooded with calls, serious calls, people who are not laughing, and they have produced a motion picture now. Uh, that is a comedy called Men in Black. Uh, why, uh, why do you think they would choose this time, that subject, to, uh, to do a comedy? You know, I don't really want to slip over into paranoia and say, and say it's a big cover up. And so my, my tendency is, is to, uh, say that, well, it was taken from a comic book, in fact. Um, this Men in Black movie started out as a comic book, and I think they were just playing uh, quite loose with the idea of Men in Black and perhaps really didn't know anything about the Men in Black. Now, if they had made, let's say, a case for government mind control operations or a case for uh, a government cover-up, perhaps it would have been a little bit harder to obtain the financing, but um, but as to whether... Um, Anything sinister shaped uh, the film to begin with? Uh, probably not. Okay. Uh, first time caller line, you're on the air with Jim Keith. Good morning. Good morning, Art. Um, good morning, Jim. Where are you, ma'am? Um, my name is Roxanne, and I'm in Napa County, and I actually faxed you this because I wasn't sure I'd be able to get on tonight. All right. Um, but I'd rather oh, I've, got, I've, I've got your fax in yeah. my hand. Oh, okay. I wasn't even sure that was the right number. Uh, no, you made it. It says, Art, this happened. Yes. Uh-huh. All right, why don't you go ahead and tell the story, because I was prepared to read it on the air, but I'd rather hear it from you. Okay, let me tell you, too, that my heart's being fast whenever I repeat this story. Um, I've told very few people in my lifetime because I know what the reaction would be. And then when I did, I'm 41 now, and when I told uh, someone who I thought was an intellectual about this a couple of years ago, they tried to justify it as being an act of child molestation that I didn't want to remember, so I was creating right. the men in black. But what it is is this. When I was about six, my sister was almost nine years old, and we were playing in the backyard. We lived in this big Dutch colonial house, two-story in San Francisco, and my, mo- my mother was from England. She had an English accent. My sister and I were in the backyard playing, and I had a favorite tree that I would climb. It had a smooth spot for me sitting in it so much. <laughs> and I would climb up there, and just with my thoughts, and sometimes just talk out loud to the tree. I even named the tree. So I was up there, and my sister was picking flowers. She was more of a lady. I was more of a tomboy. And then I sort of lost track of what she was doing because I was swinging on the tree. It was pretty high, well, for a kid. And then I could barely hear my mom's voice coming from the patio outside of the backyard. This is a huge house we're talking about. Right. And I heard my mom saying that, you know, calling out, Roxanne, Denise, dinner time. And so... I sort of started running for the back door, and I said, I'll get 
Denise. And I ran back to tell Denise that it was dinner time, and she wasn't in the backyard anymore. And so I thought, well, maybe she wants to do something naughty. We're not supposed to go over that fence because there's an empty lot behind it, and it was kitty corner. I guess that's what you would call it. So the house next door was really, really over our backyard fence, so the next house over was an empty lot. I mean, the next space over was an empty lot full of grass. When I... Sorry. When I jumped up on the fence, I was standing on a two-by-four and stretching with all my might to see over it to see if she'd gone over there.